Hello and thanks for uh, listening to this educational video about how to use Optuna and PyTorch. So I'll go ahead and uh, get right into it. So I'm the speaker for this. Um, I actually live in Japan. Um, I've been working for a company called Preferred Networks. Um, and you might know us actually as the company that originally uh, created Chainer, uh, which was a precursor to PyTorch today. Um, I was working on the Chainer team for quite a while, and currently I'm now working on the auto machine learning. All right, so let me tell you, give you an overview of what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing is I wanted to focus in a bit on hyperparameters themselves, about what they are, um, give you a, a glance at what the code would look like that we're going to be using for Optuna, then talk about the, uh, the gears of the machine, what it is that make up, makes Uptuna work and how it does what it does. Then some of the bonus benefits that you get by working with a framework like Uptuna, which will automate the process for you. And then more specifically, how you would go about applying that to PyTorch. So first off, what are hyperparameters? So hyperparameters are the the variables, if you will, that control the behavior of algorithms. And they're very important because oftentimes they can strongly determine the performance of the algorithm. And they're usually set manually uh, by the programmer who will just put in a learning rate of a certain thing or the number of layers uh, or which optimizer to use, which uh, batch process to use, etc. The really important thing, though, is that they determine the success or failure of your uh, algorithms and programs. So we have an example here of object detection. Uh, this is from our competition in the Google uh, Image Recognition Contest uh, um, on Kaggle. And uh, the bad threshold hyperparameter, you can see, gives a whole number of hyperparameters. And when we tuned this, then we were able to get down to a very clear picture of one object per box. But the thing is, is that really everywhere we see hyperparameters. So we just talked about the suppression method and the suppression threshold, which is what enabled us to give those nice boxes for our uh, application. But if you start just at the beginning, the network trainer or the image itself, what kind of augmentation method you're going to use, what order, what magnitude of, uh, are you going to do for the augmentations, what image size will you use, what image format, um, how you will use the JPEG decoder. Then within the detector model you have, uh, you're going to use VGG, uh, ResNet, ResNext, uh, NASNet, um, the number of res box you're going to use, kernel size, batch normalization order, um, the number of FPN layers, etc. And then on the network trainer, to train the network, then you have the batch size, uh, which optimizer you're going to use, uh, whether it's SGG, Momentum, Atom Alpha, um, what you're going to have the learning rate be, or learning rate schedule should be. And then even as you go down to the hardware, which you might not think of, whether you're going to use FP16 or FP32, um, floating point precision or mixed precision, um, or even the CUDA kernel parameters. So there's a huge number of things that have to be tuned. But then the thing is, is that usually what people start doing is they do this um, by hand. So they take the things they know about, say the learning rate or the dropout, um, and try a setting for that uh, 0.1 learning rate, 0.5 dropout rate. And get a certain accuracy and run that and then do it again. Okay, 0.01 learning rate, 0.2 dropout. Okay, get a certain accuracy. Try again, 0 0.05, 0 0.3 dropout, get a different result for that. But this is manually intensive. And the progress that we want to make is, is to have Optuna do this for you automatically and more quickly um, than could be usually done by hand, or perhaps in parallel. And we'll talk a bit about that later. So usually as people begin to work with deep learning algorithms, they go through sort of a hyperparameter evolution. Uh, the first step is <clears throat> hyperparameters. What hyperparameters? Basically, they're not tuning them. Uh, they just take the default values or perhaps the values from the research papers. And then the next, uh, next step is they begin to realize how important they are is people start to manually fidget with the hyperparameters to try and see what would be the appropriate value. 
And then, okay, well, um, just manually fidgeting with this doesn't seem to be giving us a full search space, so then maybe try grid search. Um, but there are problems with grid search. It doesn't focus in on areas of higher benefit. Um, there's some redundancy also when you're uh, using similar values with for a particular hyperparameter with multiple attempts. And so then we hope uh, after this presentation you'll have the confidence to start using Optuna for your hyperparameter tuning. But let's, let me give you a, a glance at what the code would look like for that. So first, I'd like to compare what um, Optuna looks like compared to existing frameworks. So uh, existing frameworks for hyperparameter tuning typically have their own syntax, um, which is different from Python and, and is uh, individual to each um, platform or framework, and you need to learn how to do that. Whereas in Optuna, I'm happy to say that basically the parameters are defined within the actual program itself. So you can see that it takes up much less space and it's much more intuitive because it's defining the search space during optimization using Python language. I think of this in some ways as uh, similar to the difference that was there between um, the uh, deep learning frameworks that existed before Chainer and with Chainer then came the eager mode which was adopted by PyTorch um, also, TensorFlow now uses eager mode. So it's the same sort of revolution where previously it's sort of predefined and sort of outside of the space, whereas Optuna brings it into the actual space of the program. So it's there available to you. Um, debugging becomes more straightforward and also enables you to use natural Python language for the definitions so that you can do looping or other things within the def definitions as well. So a fast look at what that would look like within an actual program is first of all we import torch, we import Optuna. Uh, then we need to make an objective function, so we need to wrap uh, the, basically the function within an objective function, change the parameters so that they're sampled, return the accuracy of the objective function, and then add two lines to have Optuna optimize it. And that's the fast version. Uh, towards the end of this presentation we'll be going into more detail on how to apply that to PyTorch. So next, let's talk about uh, the gears of the machine, how it is that Optuna does what it does. So basically, there are two parts of a uh, hyperparameter optimizer that work together to quickly find the best hyperparameter values within a certain time. So the first thing is that it uses a sampling strategy to decide where to look. And the next thing is that it can use a pruning strategy, so if a particular trial is not looking very promising. It can be terminated early to provide more time to better trials. So as I said, the samplers are where to look. Um, so as opposed to a grid search, which is going to be very methodical, uh, or a random search, Optuna is going to focus in using, uh, most of the samplers will focus in using Bayesian um, filtering to find the places where it has had the best results and continue to look there. So you can see this on this graph. On the, the left side, we have sort of a random search. And then on the right side, it has the areas that Optuna chose to search. And you can see that as it's trying to minimize this function, it focuses in on the lowest point and makes more trials there to find a better result. So for samplers, there are a number of different kinds of samplers that can be used with Optuna. The model-based samplers that we have available include uh, TPE, Tree Structured uh, Parts and Estimator, uh, which is based on kernel fitting, uh, Aussian, also Gaussian Processes, which is also another Bayesian optimization, and also Covariant Matrix Adaptation Evolutionary Strategy, uh, CMAES, which is a metaheuristics algorithm for continuous space. And there are other choices. Uh, if, if you're required if to do a random search, it can also be done where it's just purely random to fully explore all of the space equally. Or also grid search is something that can also be used. And if you want to do something else or have a different style of sampling, uh, there's also the facilities within Optuna to do a user-defined algorithm as well. So now we have several samplers and now you have to choose which one. So how do the samplers compare? Well, uh, in a way, choosing the sampler is sort of a, a hyper hyper parameter. Now this is something that Optuna needs to be told in order to decide what to do. So I've made an algorithm cheat sheet um, so that you know which of these is the best to use. From our experience uh, working with Optuna, 
we find generally that if you have more than a thousand trials, you should use the CMAES. Uh, it can handle the uh, the extreme number of volume of trials the best of any of the three. Um, if then, if the parameters are correlated, you try the Gaussian process, and if not, try TPE um, for your sampler. Um, and the default for Optuna is TPE, so if you don't know which of these is the best choice, TPE is generally a solid uh, option. So next, talking about pruners and uh, stopping trials early. So the pruning strategy uh, basically is that for some trials, they're going to have a slow start and never be able to make up that start. So there are a number of uh, pruning uh, algorithms within Optuna that will then um, terminate those unpromising trials early so that that compute time can be dedicated to more promising trials. Uh, as an example for this, we have the uh, Street View House numbers data set, where we worked with for a bit. And uh, using successive halving as the pruning algorithm, we found it to be twice as fast in optimization using pruning as it was without pruning. So also for um, pruning, it requires a bit more work uh, with the code itself and uh, is a little bit less black box. So for uh, more automated structures, uh, we have inter automated libraries, we have integrations available. Um, this would be something like PyTorch Lightning, uh, PyTorch Ignite, or FastAI, where some of the work inside of the training loop is automated for you and might be uh, put into a subroutine that you don't access directly. And to save you the trouble of having to try to go within that um, training loop, we've made integrations available for Optuna so that it's easy to implement this pruning along with any of these um, frameworks. Also, there are bonus benefits of using a program like Optuna that is an automated program to go through and work on finding the best hyperparameters. One of these is it enables you to scale up fairly easily. So here's the example for this where we're going ahead and creating a study. Uh, we make an example study as the name. I have some storage for it, examples. Um, and then if the database already exists, then we go ahead and use the existing database to create a new one. Uh, we type basically just executed on six different machines. And with access to that common database, Optuna is able to use all six of those machines to simultaneously optimize, uh, search over the search space, and find hyperparameters. So this is uh, very scalable. Uh, the machines don't need to be the exact same size or spec or anything. It's basically able to use the compute that you have available to you and is very powerful for finding a quick way to get the best hyperparameters that you can find. This is uh, asynchronous parallelization of trials, so another one could be kicked off even after the first one is, and gives near linear scaling. Another benefit that you get from using Optuna is you have access to visualization. So one of the visualizations that you could use, for example, would be a plot contour. So you can see what the search space is looking like as it's going through and finding out what the various values are, the number of layers, um, or the number of uh, samples. And one of the newest things that we've implemented in Optuna is to take a look for what matters most. So as I mentioned before in one of the first slides, there's an enormous number of values that could be considered to be hyperparameters. But honestly, uh, if you set up an Optuna or a PyTorch program and you made Optuna try to optimize all of those hyperparameters, it doesn't work. The, the curse of dimensionality will slow down the optimization ex to a major degree. Um, so what you want to know is you want to know which are the hyperparameters that matter the most, that are important. So Optuna, after running a small start test, can then give you the hyperparameter importances. Here's a graphic display of it for just a standard MNIST PyTorch run. And so you see that, as we would expect, the most important hyperparameter for PyTorch on uh, doing a fully connected MNIST is the learning rate. Next thing is the number of units in the very first layer, then the optimizer, then the dropout rate. 
And then later on the batch size, number of units, drop out on another layer, activation. So this then gives you a strong hint uh, and quickly tells you where you should be having Optuna focus its attention to make the best results that are possible within the time you have. So this is something that is a, a huge improvement forward and the nice graphical outlook of this can really help to shorten the amount of time that you would need to decide what it is that you should be focusing on with your compute time. So now let's take a look and see how we could apply this to PyTorch. Let me start uh, kind of at the beginning and just talk about the installation. Okay, this should be fairly straightforward. Uh, let's see, for Linux, you would go pip install up tuna. On Mac OS, it's kind of uh, kind of similar for you. Uh, also, pip install up tuna. And on a Windows machine, you know, it's got to be a little different. So it's uh, the system prompt changes. So yeah, that's that's very different. Okay, um, so that's how you install Uptuna. So then for actual code itself, this is just a high-level diagram of the entire change that you need to do to run Uptuna. It needs to be imported, and then you need to have an objective trial. So the objective, tri objective function is a function that takes in the trial object, which is passed to it by Uptuna when it's called, um, has your code, and then returns some kind of an evaluation score. Um, the default is that this will be minimized, uh, can also be maximized, but something to tell Uptuna whether this was a good or a bad trial. So then the last two lines um, saying that basically study, we create an Uptuna study, and then we optimize it um, using the objective function and set the number of trials that you want to run. So that's the general template for using Uptuna. Let's apply it more specifically to PyTorch. So importing, very important. Uh, basically, all that's been added to this is import Optuna. But I, I did want to bring your attention at the very bottom uh, in italics. I've included the link to the entire code for this. I'll be skipping over some of the sections of the PyTorch code that don't really change for Optuna, so I can focus in and show you the areas that are different as opposed to the entire code. This is just a simple MNIST, uh, fully connected layer uh, demonstration. And if you want to see the full code, please take a look at the link below. So the first thing uh, to do is to define the model. Uh, those of you who are in PyTorch, after you have the, the data and other things ready, you want to define the model. One of the things I want to draw your attention to is it's also being traced the trial object. So the trial object is passed by Optuna and then allows the features of Optuna to be accessed within the function. So right at the first line, we have n layers equals trial.suggest int n layers 1 to 3. So this is basically telling Optuna that the n layers um, label will refer to an integer between 1 and 3. So we'll have 1 to 3 layers in this MNIST model. And then going down a little bit below, we have for i in range and layers. So this is demonstrating where you can use the, the looping structure of uh, Python in order to define your Optuna labels and variables, hyperparameters that will be tuned. So then the next one again uses a trial.suggest int to have the number of units, which can range from 4 to 128. And so this will be done for each of the three possible layers, or if there's only one layer, it'll be just be done for the first layer. And then the next one is we have a dropout for this particular uh, layer. So it's the dropout, and then according to the number of the layer, and that's from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. And the rest of it is basically a, a standard uh, PyTorch definition of a model. The next function is the actual objective function itself, and this will call the model that we just defined above. So you can see right there in the first line, generate the model, the model equals define model, uh, brackets trial. So this is where it's passing the trial object up into the model so that it can be further used there to uh, define the number of layers. And then since we have the trial object here, the next line is we use it to also select what we want to use for an optimizer. We have three different possible optimizers, Atom, RMS Prop, or SGD. Uh, take your own pick as well. And then we have the learning rate where we suggest the uh, fl have a float, floating learning rate. Uh, also, the, the uh, optimizer, as you might have noticed above, is a categorical. So it's just a list of things. Uh, Optuna can handle categories or floats or log normal or any other kind of space for the hyperparameters. 
And then we use that uh, learning rate or optimizer name then to actually decide what the optimizer will be for the model. Then uh, the rest of this code within the objective function will include the training loop and is fairly standard until we get to the end where you have the, uh, you report back the accuracy and what epic was done. So these next uh, four lines, the trial.report accuracy and epic, and also the trial should prune, these are for the pruning function. So while largely Uptuna is a black box optimizer, in order to do pruning, it needs information before the function is done to decide whether the trial should be terminated early or not. So the trial report is reporting back to Uptuna uh, how far it is into the trial, the epic, and also how well it's doing, the accuracy. And then Uptuna will feed back, okay, is this a sufficiently good trial to continue or not? And if the answer is that it should be pruned, then we want to uh, raise an exception so that the function can be exited, exi exited gracefully. <laughs> and that it can then hand over those resources for another hopefully more promising trial. Then for the actual running of the program itself, uh, we have uh, if name equals main, so now we're, those are the two lines you might remember from up above where we have Optuna create study and the direction is chose to maximize this time as opposed to the default to minimize and then we go ahead and optimize it uh, using the objective function we defined up above um, the number of trials, 100, and also set a, tri a timeout. And the, the items, lines below this are basically there to give a nice printout so at the end of the program we can see what the result was, what Optuna found, what the best hyperparameters were that Optuna found for that time. So we want to see the number of finished trials, number of pruned trials and complete, and then also what the best trial was, what the results, uh, the value that it delivered, and what those parameters were that delivered that value. Now going ahead and running it, we can see that uh, Python PyTorch simple.py, uh, it downloads the MNIST data set, and then we see in the middle, uh, trial zero started finished with a certain value, trial one finished with a slightly better value, and the hyperparameters for each of those, and then continues on trial three, trial four, and then around trial five, now it realizes that with some of the history that it has, the trial five isn't as good as some of the trials it's already done. So as opposed to you running out the full five, trial five, it prunes it midway through, along with six and seven, until it finds some better values. And for the default value of this, we had uh, 100 trials that would be tried. And we skip ahead to the final answer after it's done 100 trials. And you can see the summary of statistics that the number of finished trials was 100. 67% of them were pruned almost exactly, two-thirds, um, and 33 were completed. Uh, the best value we got was 95% accuracy. Uh, actually found that this other layers were not required. It got just as good a result with one layer, 115 nodes on that layer, dropout rate of 40%, uh, and the best optimizer was Atom with a learning rate of, 0 point, of 0 0.02. So that completes uh, my presentation uh, educational video on how to use Optuna and PyTorch. Uh, for more information, you can go to optuna.org or come directly to see us on GitHub at Optuna slash Optuna. And I wanted to say thank you very much for your attention and listening. And uh, please uh, let us know if you have any questions or other things. Uh, we welcome issues or pull requests or other things on GitHub, and thanks for your attention.